This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm Roby Brock, joined by John Brummett of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Took a week off last week. Nice to see you. Thanks I missed for you. bringing a pretty spring day along with us. A little with chilly, you. but uh, a nice spring day. It is nice. Is this so. April Fool's Day? It is April Fool's That's Day. That's a bad day for, uh, for me to be talking about public policy. <laughs> uh, but, but I'll try to not be fooling about it. I would appreciate it if you'd okay. just be a straight shooter All right. today. All right. Let's talk about what has been happening up at the state legislature. You have had uh, the uh, Arkansas Works ruling from the federal right. judge that says the work requirement cannot stand. That came right after the state senate voted to approve the the, uh, the measure or the, the budget for that. The house fell short by about 23 votes if I remember correctly. 52 votes needs 75. You predicted that it would that the judge would rule the way that he did. I will give you a chance to spike your football in the end zone. No need. There's, I take no pride in uh, being right about the state's folly. Uh, <laughs> and the predicament uh, Governor Hutchison uh, may be finding himself in. But uh, as you, yes, uh, for months, months ago I was saying this thing is gonna come down the way it's gonna come down because Medicaid, if the judge had already ruled in a Kentucky case, Medicaid is, is not a work program, it is a health care uh, uh, program and it is that by statute and you cannot do this. And I predicted it would happen. And the plaintiffs were saying this is going to happen sometime in late March. And that, as you know, is when they start kicking in on the appropriations, the big ones. And I even suggested this, this could happen about the time the legislature is considering that always tough, arduous task of getting three-fourths vote for the Medicaid expansion. Uh, it came down minutes after the Senate and uh, two days before the House voted. But before the session, at, for, for your magazine, mm -hmm. at your behest, I do so many things at your behest. I was, uh, I was, I was uh, you know, I predicted that this was going to be big, so I asked right. you to handle this. I interviewed together jointly the House Speaker Shepard and the House and the Senate President Pro Tem Hendren, and I asked them about that. And their answer basically was, "You may be right; the judge will rule that. We don't know, but even if he does, we're not, at that point in the session, nobody's going to be of a mind to shut down without a Medicaid appropriation or a Human Services appropriation." Uh, and we'll be dealing with the ruling and how to answer it, and uh, we don't foresee any problem. Today, I foresee something of a problem. Fifty, uh, that was just sort of a warm-up vote. Uh, they do these things. Let's find out and read let's, where let, everybody yeah, is. Let's and see, see what we've got, we... and let's see who's going to be trouble, and let's give some people a chance to vote no for the record until we talk them into it with something you know, or until they come around, right. or until the local rural hospital administrator comes to town, and all these things that happen. Uh, so they may get there, but I don't, 23 is a lot to pick up just on a little gamesmanship like that. Mm -hmm. the, the, there may be trouble. Uh, so that's where I see it, and it's, uh, we've, every session, this comes down to the issue. Can you get to 75 to do the right thing? This shores up the state budget, uh, uh, shores up rural hospitals, plugs 230,000 people into the uh, uh, ins private insurance pool, which holds premiums down for everybody, uh, and helps poor people. And we have thrown off with this silly, now illegal work requirement, 16 to 18,000. Right. And because they can't punish those 18,000 or more, there may be some House members out there who want to publish punish 230,000. It makes no sense, and if that's what they choose to do, that's what they choose to do. I'm tired of the fight. If they're not ready for the program by now, uh, you know, we, then, then maybe Arkansas doesn't deserve it. Right. That's sort of the way I'm... All right, let's back up on a piece through a sure. few things that you said there. Let's start first with, I had uh, DHS Director Cindy Gillespie on the TV I show saw this that weekend, did. and mm -hmm. she basically said that she felt the judge's ruling was wrong because there are other requirements in some other Medicaid programs, even work requirements, she said. That they have programs that work with the developmentally disabled, and it is healthy to have them in some sort of work environment. It helps them with their health, and well, that is one of the arguments that she used for saying this work requirement should stand on appeal. Is that a... How do you respond to that argument? I find no such uh, statute for Medicaid itself or for Medicaid expansion. And even in my, in my brief interview post news conference with the governor last week, he said we may need a new 
a new Affordable Care Act and an equivalent Medicaid expansion which expressly permits a work requirement. The judge says no, the plaintiffs say no, there was a bill proposed in the recent, uh, in, in the Congress two or three years ago to expressly say you could have a work requirement in Medicaid and it got voted down. So, I mean, she can spend it any way she wants and, she, and she's a smart woman and she knows her business. I'm just telling you what the judge ruled and uh, that's where we are. So let's go through to the vote count. You talked about the fact that this seems like a big hurdle to get to 75 from 52. I have already heard privately of some elected officials in the House in particular saying, I got a few things I'm going to want to talk to the governor about, about this. Does it come down to horse trading at this point in time? It may. It, it, it may. Uh, I mean, you've got, we now have identified, uh, we've got to get to uh, 75, they got 52. 52 who have voted for it once are going to vote for it again. There were some not presents that were there too. So, so. right, so, um, right, but th th they got to, and they got to go get 23 people, and we now have identified who those are. And sure, I mean, uh, uh, that's, sadly, that's the underbelly of uh, politics. The program stands for itself. The program is important to the state. But if some people want a horse trade, we may see. But uh, I don't know how much, I, I don't know what's on the table, and we'll have to wait. I don't know how many times they'll have to vote. And I just want to say this. Uh, in, in behalf of Asa Hutchinson, just for the context, uh, he didn't have to embrace this to start with, mm -hmm. but he did. He saw it was the right thing to do for the budget and for the rural hospitals and for the insurance industry, and he embraced it. And now, maybe for people that needed health insurance. Ma yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and he's done it even though his party was a, was a hard sell. And he's, he's done it by rebranding it in a way that I find almost entirely cosmetic and now undercut uh, as, a, as a work program, but he's tried to do it. And, and at, I wrote a Sunday column, he's, he's like tap dancing through a minefield on this thing, trying to keep this thing going. And I almost feel bad when I point out that he's essentially trying to embrace Obamacare in a Trump era as a member of Trump's party with this right wing legislature. But that's what he's trying to do. Those are the facts. And who knows what he's got to beg, borrow, and steal to try to do it. But it's important that they get it done. Now, one other thing, uh, the, the, the leadership was telling me, if we undo, if we don't approve Medicaid expansion, we go home without a Medicaid budget or a human services budget. Not necessarily. You can take the money out. You could, re, you could restyle the appropriation so you don't have money for the Medicaid expansion. Or you can put a rider in there that said, none of this will go for Medicaid. It's not, I shouldn't say, it's true. Yeah. The, 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 well, I think Speaker Shepard said on Friday that he, he did not see decoupling this specific no, no, they, program saying from not. the Medicaid budget. But I'm telling you, should I say this? I'm <laughs> telling you, that's tactical. They're trying to say, if you don't vote for this, for all whole, of it, all of right. it uh, uh, if you don't vote for this Medicaid expansion, we got nothing for anybody. That's a fine tactic. It is not actually so. There are ways to restyle the appropriation so that money is not covered. Uh, so it's tough, and we're going to have yet uh, uh, round six now of, of this search for 75. I could write an entire book about this thing. <laughs> I like search, the name of that, the search, search for 75. The search for 75. I see a column Maybe. Uh, headline coming right uh, there. But it's important. This program, this pro, nothing, very few things that I've ever covered make, uh, makes more sense than this program. And we'll just see if we've got gumption enough to approve it. We will see you too this week, I predict, a couple of different votes, two to three, maybe, you think? We could go kind of back to 2013 when Davy Carter was Speaker of the House and they just, they kept voting on it and voting on it and voting on yeah, it and yeah. finally wore them down. That's the tactic. And, yep. if, and I didn't, I was assured at the start, it's not, we're not going to have to go through that again no matter what happens. Wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, the 50, uh, getting 52 sends a signal. You're going to have to, here is the hurdles and we're going to have to go over them. And in the past, some, one day, you might get 52 and try again, and you'll get 48 next time. Because some few others said, well, I think I'll take my opportunity to say no. And you just keep trying, and then what's going on in the, in the, in, in, in the back rooms to, 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 to get these votes is really a part of politics you don't want to see. <laughs> it's the sausage right. making that's the right. ugliest part of it. Right. All right, so last question for you, because I think this just throws yet another complication into things. 
Uh, we do have the Trump administration shifting <laughs> position on the entire Infordo Affordable Care Act and its uh, viability. Right. Basically now wanting to see it completely stricken down, which our Attorney General, Leslie mm -hmm. Rutledge, is a part of that lawsuit. H how does that fold into the rest of the conversation here? All I can do is relate something I related in my Sunday column, which is just a very brief conversation with the governor after his news conference. I'm hovering around because nobody has asked the question and I'm going to ask it and he looks over his lawyer and looks at me and goes, all right, what is it? And, and I said, you just said that, that you are fully in on the Arkansas Works program. The Arkansas Works program is Obamacare Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. Your president is in the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals trying to do away with all of it. On a lawsuit, your Republican Attorney General of this state has joined. Aren't you at odds with them? My answer to that is yes. His answer is no, because he's doing the necessary tap dance. At the time, I was inviting him at a time he's trying to get conservative votes for Medicaid expansion to part with his popular president. No way he's going to do that. Basically, he said, if Medicaid expansion as we have it now uh, does not allow a work requirement, then we need to pass a new Medicaid expansion that does so. He was for, it was Clintonian, but better. It was, we need to blow it up and save it at the same time. <laughs> well, as and the odds of doing that in a divided Congress listen, are smaller than Robert, getting to 75. I've made, I made one good prediction about the judge, and we'll make another one. If, the, if this thing gets, th if the Affordable Care Act is thrown out, they'll never rebuild it. It's Humpty Dumpty. They, were, uh, they won't. They, you think Nancy Pelosi's house is going to go along with the work requirement? They hung, they, they'll hang up on whether to turn back to the state's uh, pre-existing conditions. That, it's, it was a miracle to get it done once. And, and uh, the contradiction between a Republican governor in Arkansas trying to save this at a time his party and his president are trying to kill it and claim they've got a replacement that they don't have. It is, it is, a, it is a contradiction that is somehow, somehow typifies the Trump era in American politics. We're going to end it at that. All right. All right. He's John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You can catch him three times a week in the newspaper, a fourth time online, every day online, really. Thank you for being here. My pleasure as always. All right, we'll see you soon. That's all for today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses, just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.